Now, while you're watching this video, please remember to like, subscribe to my channel, click the bell icon for notification of future videos, and share this video also. Thank you. Now, speaking in tongue in the form of the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Amen. as in the day of Pentecost, mm -hmm. whenever someone speaks in tongues, as it was on the day of Pentecost. That's right. That's evidence that God dwells in right. a person. That's right. Amen. Listen. In Acts chapter 2 and at verse 4. Now go back to Corinth. Back to 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 2. What is it? For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue. Speaketh not unto speak men. Speaketh not unto man. But unto God. So when you have the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue, it is no preacher. I should be able to tell you, one, what you should say. That's right. Neither should he be able to tell you when you're speaking in tongue in the spirit. Mm -hmm. All right, shut up. Shut up. We don't heard enough of that now. You shut up now. That's right. When you stop, you don't have the Holy Ghost. That's right. Because then that man got authority over God. Over God, Amen. That's right. So when your preacher can tell you, well, look, don't you, you stop speaking in tongue now. Don't you do that no more. Mm -hmm. You're not allowed to do that in here. And then you consent to it and say, all right, I do it at home. You never had the Holy Ghost. Never had it. That's right. Because, buddy, you can't tell God when to utter through me. No, no. This is a gift. That's right. And James said every good gift and every perfect gift come from above. Well, hello there. Welcome back to my channel. So... As you can see in this, the title of this video is Practical Proofs That Speaking in Tongues Is Not Necessary for Salvation This is what we want to talk about in this video Now, before I get into it, let's have a quick word of prayer Most kind and compassionate Father As I'm about to enter into another phase of study I pray Lord that those who will be seeing this their hearts and minds will be open to receive and see the truth that you would have them receive and see, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. May your Holy Spirit speak through me and use me as a vessel to speak to your people. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Okay, so that person whom you just saw, his name is Pastor Gino Jennings. And based on what he's saying is that whenever you see a person speak in tongues, that is evidence that they have the Holy Ghost. You understand? So in this video, we are going to contend with that idea because when he's saying that, you know, in reality, you know, whether he realizes or not, he's saying that once a person doesn't speak in tongues, that means they don't have the Holy Ghost. They have never, been, they are not filled with the Holy Ghost. You know the works. And this is the underlining issue behind many Pentecostalist faith. What they preach, what they believe, what they promote. You understand? Now, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to show you the inconsistencies in the Bible where speaking in tongues is concerned and where receiving the Holy Ghost is concerned. Right? Now, before I get into that, to give you a basic idea of what the whole um, tongues, where it is coming from. It is coming from the idea of baptism of the Holy Ghost. When John was um, preaching the kingdom of God and so forth, and when he was asked if he's a Christ, he said to them, No, and he tells them that there is one coming after him which is greater than him. He it is that will baptize with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And we read, we read in Luke, I think it's chapter 24. You understand when Jesus was about to leave and he tell him that they should tarry and wait for the promise of the Holy Ghost. In Acts chapter 1 now we find Jesus saying to them that they are again. You understand that they should wait for the, uh, uh, um, for the Holy Ghost. In Acts chapter 2 they were doing just that. Right? In the upper room and so forth. All of them were in one accord according to the scripture. In Acts chapter 2. You can read it for yourself. And it tell her that the Holy Ghost came down like a mighty rushing wind. And it was like cloven tongues. You understand? Came and sat upon them uh, uh, like fire. Right? And all of them spoke in tongues. That is the disciples 
as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. Now, what happened in you know, that there were many persons of different nations in the land of Israel at that time. You understand? And they all heard them spoken in tongues. Now, many were around um, who were unbelieving, Jews and so forth. Right? And they were saying that these are drunken men, of which Peter stood up and said, No, what happened is a fulfillment of what was said in Joel chapter 2. You understand? That it shall come to pass afterwards where I will pour up my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Old men shall um, have, have vision and, and young men shall have dreams, etc. You understand? And what happened when you're reading Acts chapter 2, you know, is that thousands upon thousands was around. And they believed that his Gentiles, you know, they believed and they were baptized. And the ending of the verse... You saw that after they believe and they baptize, they did not speak in tongues. That's the first inconsistency there, you know. Because in Acts chapter 2, it did say, in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, let me find it and read it for you. In Acts chapter 2, verse 38, let me just find it here and read it for you, right? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And he shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So the fact that they got baptized, it would mean that they would have repented. And once they have been baptized, according to Peter's word, they would have received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Because Peter said that, that upon repentance... Upon baptism and repentance, what follows after is the gift of the Holy Ghost. This is not um we don't call it no optional, you know. It is a sorry. It is not optional, it is a must. Once you repent and you baptize, it is a must that you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So every believer, once they repent, and once they baptize, they receive the gift of the Holy Ghost according to Peter's word. Now, upon receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost, does speaking in tongues is what happens naturally after? In some cases, but not in all cases. Because what we see in Acts chapter 2, you know, when you read further down, they did not speak in tongues. They did not speak in tongues, right? So, give me a minute here. Yes, sorry about that. Yes, so they did not speak in tongues. This is one of the instances, you know, where they did not speak, where, where some persons didn't speak in tongues. Now, in Acts chapter, um, in Acts chapter 8, we find where Philip the Evangelist, he talks about Philip the Evangelist, right? And he tell you that Peter, he tell you that Peter and John, right? Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that, that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who, when they were come down, prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Right? So they prayed for them that they might receive, receive the Holy Ghost. And, um, sorry, just give me a minute here. I lost the verse. They prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. And it said, it say, um, who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Because they didn't receive the Holy Ghost yet. Right? For as yet he, uh, he was falling upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And Simon, and when Simon saw that through laying on all of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. Now, if you read, continue to read in the verses onwards, it doesn't show where those persons um, spoke in tongues. It doesn't show where they speak in tongues, so they received the Holy Ghost, but they did not speak in tongues. 
and you read further with the Philippian, um, with the Yuna, we are um, with Phil, we have who Philip baptized. He didn't speak in tongues either. Remember, you know, repentance come before baptism, you know, and after that, the Holy Ghost, you know. So, based off what he said in Acts chapter 2, verse 30, that Philippian, um, that eunuch should say, would have received the Holy Ghost, but he did not speak in tongues. He doesn't show where he speak in tongues. But they would assume, you know, you understand that they speak in tongues, just as how they would assume in Acts chapter 8 that they speak in tongues. But why would the Holy Ghost hide this from us? If this was supposed to be evidence that person speak in tongues, don't you think the Holy Spirit that, that inspired the Word of God would be consistent in showing us in Acts chapter 2 where the 3,000 and odd persons received the Holy Ghost after baptism? Wouldn't he have shown that they all spoke in tongues? If this is true, you know, the Holy Spirit would be consistent in showing us that we won't be able to doubt that this is evidence. There will be consistency upon everyone who received the Holy Ghost. We would see them uh, um, speaking tongues. But here we are seeing inconsistencies. You understand? Of Philip, it is said that in Acts chapter 8, and the people with one accord gave heed unto those things. Verse 6, which Philip spake, hearing and seeing in the miracles which he did. For unclean spirit, crying with loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them. And many taken with palsies, and that were lame, were healed by Philip. That's a spiritual gift manifested through Philip, you know. Yet there is no record that spirit speak uh, um, um, that, that Philip spoke in tongues. Are you going to say that Philip doesn't have the Holy Ghost? You can't say that. And ironically, you know, they would use Acts chapter, they would use Mark chapter 14, uh, Mark chapter 16 as a proof text. I did a video on that. You understand saying these are the signs that shall follow. One of them is speaking in tongues, and one of them um, is, 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 uh, is healing. And I did state in that video that those verses are not authentic. You can check it out and see why I say it's not authentic. But if they want to disbelieve that, they must also preach that person should heal as well because it is one of the signs that is said to have followed also. You understand? Yes, they don't, pre they don't press anyone to heal, you know. They don't press on anyone to manifest the gift of healing because those things are up are basically an optional where the spirit is concerned he decides if they want if you want to give this gift or give that gift none of the two of them is mandatory you understand now in acts chapter 9 we see where paul baptized paul was baptized you know you understand no record of him right there speaking in tongues even though he did say that he spoke in tongues in in first Corinthians chapter 14 more than them all you understand and stating that he wish that they spoke in tongues you understand so we know he spoke in tongues but what but he didn't speak in tongues right then and there when he got baptized because the text would have showed that so if a person is going to speak in tongues it doesn't have to happen immediately at baptism we find in acts chapter 10 of uh, however you understand persons believe receive the holy ghost and spoke in tongues even before baptism you understand so in acts chapter um 19 when you read it person spoke in tongues immediately let me look into it look into it just to make sure in acts chapter 19 right person spoke in tongues immediately after baptism but in acts chapter 10 verse 45 to 48 you understand they spoke in tongues before you understand baptism right and in acts chapter 2 no one speak in tongues none at all neither before or after baptism we're talking about those who were baptized and received the Holy Ghost, you know. No one speak in tongues either before or after baptism. Apart from only person that spoke in tongues in Acts chapter 2 is the, is the disciples. 
You understand? In Acts chapter 16, verse 15, there is a woman who received verse 6, no, verse 15 of Acts chapter 16. A woman got baptized and she didn't speak in tongues. It didn't state that she speak in tongues. In Acts, in Acts chapter 16, verse 33, however, it tells of a, of a jailer. You can read it for yourself. You understand that? He and his household was baptized, right? And none of them spoke in tongues. None of them spoke in tongues. You read Acts chapter 11. You read Acts chapter 11. When you read Acts chapter 11, right? Verse, I think verse 19 to 24. It tells you that Barnabas was full of the Holy Ghost. But yes, there is no record of him speaking to, in tongues. Just as how Philip, no record of him speaking in tongues. But he healed. You understand? And with the woman in Acts chapter 16, verse 15, no record of her speaking in tongues. Acts chapter 16, verse 33, no record. You understand? Of the, the man and his household speaking in tongues. Because remember now, you know, upon repentance and baptism, what follow? You receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So, the woman in Acts 16 verse 15, she received the Holy Ghost because she repented and she baptized. Likewise, the man and his household in, in verse 33, you understand? He received the Holy Ghost, no speaking in tongues. You understand? In Acts chapter 8, no speaking in tongues. You understand? From those persons. And the eunuch as well, he didn't speak in tongues either. You understand? So how is it that they are going to say that it is evidence that one that one um, um, has the Holy Ghost when we are seeing persons here get baptized and according to scripture of repentance and baptism you receive the Holy Ghost and yet still persons don't speak in tongues in those, in those, in those instances we are showing you. This is what I would need I would need um, for Pentecostals to explain to me because for some reason I cannot understand. In Acts chapter 11 verse 28, a man by the name of Agabus was a prophet. You understand? We know that he has the gift of the Holy, of, of the Holy Ghost because he's a prophet. But nothing made me, no mention of him speaking in tongues. You understand? So what's the last point that I want to point out to you here? If you go and check all those instances where persons spoke in tongues, there were no unbelieving Jews around apart from Acts chapter 10 verse 45 to 48. They of the circumcision were astonished and they believed because of what they saw. That's the only instance. You understand? Made mention, uh, uh, made mention of persons um, unbelieving are uh, they of the circumcision, you understand, around. And yes, they, be they believe in Acts chapter 10, verse 45 to 48. But other instances, such as Acts 16, verse 15 and verse 33, with a man and his household, Acts chapter, Acts chapter 8, no mention of persons of unbelieving Jews around. You understand, likewise in Acts chapter 9 as well, and likewise in Acts chapter, Acts chapter 11. No, no, forget, scratch up to Acts chapter 11, mistake. Exclude that one. Acts chapter 16, verse 15 and 33. No mention of unbelieving Jews alone. Likewise in Acts chapter 8. You understand? And likewise in Acts chapter 19 with, 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 with Paul. No unbelieving Jews alone. Right? In Acts chapter 2, however unbelieving Jews were around but they didn't believe you understand and they didn't speak in tongues in Acts chapter 10 unbelieving uh, they have the circumcision who, are be, who, who were unbelieving you understand they were around when tongues was manifest and they believe you understand so one instant in Acts chapter 2 it was of none effect you understand to the, 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 the Jews around only the Gentiles uh, um, received the message in Acts chapter 10, however, it was effectual in, 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 in converting the hearts of those of the circumcision at that time. So what we, what we should recognize here is that the times when the gift 
of the uh, of tongues was being manifest unbelieving jews are around in acts chapter 2 and in acts chapter 10 and in acts chapter 19 unbelieving jews are around you understand when the gift of tongues is being manifest at those other times when we don't see the gift of tongues being manifest such as in acts chapter 8 and acts chapter 16 and acts chapter 9 you understand no unbelieving Jews were around. And what this is saying to you, it's what I, I it's what I made mention of in my videos. You understand? And speaking in tongues. That the gift of tongues is a sign unto the Jews. You understand? Because the Jews always sought after a sign. It was a sign for the unbelieving Jews. You understand? It was a sign. For unbelievers, not for persons who believe. You understand? It's basically to convert them, so to speak. But notice, however, you know that when the gift of tongues is being manifested, it is not in the church. It is outside of the church because Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 that in the church he would rather have a, 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 a person prophesy so that everyone can be edified. But no one should speak in tongues in the church unless there is an interpreter. You understand? So when Gino Genesis is saying that if your pastor said here, say, hey, none of that right now. You understand? And you, uh, you uh, abide by it. You don't, have the whole, you don't have the Holy Ghost. What he's saying is just false. You understand? It is just unbiblical. Because you, sh you rightly should shut up. If there is no interpreter because the Bible says be silent. You understand? And, and there are a limited amount of persons who can speak in tongues at a time. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. You understand? But we don't see them abide by this often times. We don't see them abide by this. Now, a lot of them say the excuse that they give is that um, it's not them. It's the Holy Ghost. No, 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 no. The Holy Ghost will not go contrary to God's word. What is happening is their own feelings. Or if it's not their feelings, it's another spirit at work in them. I'm very sorry to say this. I know that they're going to be offended. But the same Paul says that the spirits of the prophets is subject unto the prophets. So you should be able to control your own spirit. That is what Paul is actually saying here. If you can't control your own spirit, then something is wrong. If you can't control your own spirit and know, and know that, hey, you're in church now, you can't do that right now. You understand? Unless there are going to be someone who has the gift of interpretation and is able to interpret what, what you're actually saying. If that, if, if that is not happening, then you should keep silent. You understand? You should keep silent. Now, I end this video right here. You can see based off the evidences, based on the inconsistencies that I show you that sometimes the whole the, the, the person speak in tongues upon receiving the Holy Ghost, sometimes they don't. And that whenever person speak in tongues, it is always when unbelieving Jews are around. You understand? So that the purpose for, the, for, uh, uh, for tongues, which is a sign, can be at work. Because one persons are around, you know, that believe, in you know, it because tongues is not for those who believe, but for those who don't believe. One person who are around who doesn't have a hard heart, you understand, and believe. There's no need for tongues. You understand, unless you are going to communicate the gospel, you understand, to persons in another language. You understand, there is really no need for the gift of, uh, uh, um, for, for, to be speaking in tongues. You understand? So this is what I'm showing you guys in this video. I'm about to end now. I have about two more videos left in order to complete this. But nonetheless, I do hope that you are edified from this. Bye-bye now.